All right now, Secured Entrepreneurs, happy Money Monday. Miss Aurora wants you to know that she received a message. And in the message, there are these pics or these clips of this conversation that was going on in some FB group. Now, the conversation is happening between three or four ladies, and they are discussing life estate deeds and trust. However, Miss Aurora gets the messages simply because between the three and four ladies is a whole lot of misinformation being shared. Okay. So in this video, Miss Aurora is going to talk about the difference between a life estate deed and a trust, why it is important for the secured entrepreneur to know. Is that all right? Can I do that? Are you ready? <laughs> Okay, for those of you who do not know who I am, I am Miss Aurora Day, and this is the Secured Entrepreneur Movement. All right, so here's where Miss Aurora picks up on the clips. If you own a home outright, secure it in a trust ASAP. And then somebody says, why a trust? Another person says, Life estate deeds are beneficiary designations for properties. They avoid probate for a one-time fee at the owner's death. The, I don't know what she's saying here. Only has to file a new deed one-time cost. I thought trust had annual fees. Then somebody says, I'm not positive about annual fees, but setup can be expensive and you have to redo to make changes. Not convenient at all. Then somebody else says, why not life estate deed? Because trusts are admin costs, it looks like what she's saying. Okay, last person. Right, trusts are not necessarily the best option. Having a recorded will can remove some of the probate red tape. Probate becomes a major issue when nothing is recorded and the courts have to figure it all out. So now first I'm going to address the will statement. Because everyone here in the Secured Entrepreneur Movement knows that the will is a trick and a trap and that it is the fastest path to probate court. So we're going to save that until the end. Okay, so let me just first explain what the life estate deed is. Okay, because it appears that the young lady was close, but she wasn't she, she, she wasn't really stating it all. All right. So the life estate deed is nothing more than joint home ownership. Doesn't remove anybody's name off of that deed. So if somebody wanted to find out where you live, you still have a deed recorded at the county recorder's office with your name splattered across it. That's number one, because a life estate deed is joint home ownership. What does that mean? There is someone called a life tenant. This could be the original owner of the home, the individual who took out the original mortgage or the individual who has already paid off the home and they have a deed with their name on it, right? So they say, we want to, I, we, we want to pass the home down to our, uh, our children, our grandchildren, someone else that we know okay and we don't want the hassle we don't want them to have the hassle so we're just going to go ahead and do this life estate deed so this new deed now has the life tenant's name on it as well as what is called a remainder man the remainder man's name is also on it okay so that that means that uh, the young lady was saying you know when the person dies you got to file a new deed or whatever no the life estate deed is already going to name the uh remainder man okay so this is the individual who is now taking over this property now the individual who takes over the property does not get to do so until the death of the life tenant okay and how does this happen it happens when the death certificate is produced okay so once the death certificate is produced now we know that the remainder man now has ownership over this property. The trick to that would be that the life tenant would have to not have a will where the property is listed. Okay. Because if the life tenant has a will, 
Okay. And the property is listed. Yes. You're still up for pro probate. Okay. That's still, that's still on the table. As long as the will is involved, probate is on the table. Okay. So anyone who's doing this life estate deed or creating this life estate where you are going to have joint ownership. Okay. You need to know that you need to avoid creating a will because you will still, you, you know, the, the remainder man will still have to wait for probate to, to, to take its course to take over the property. Okay. The other thing about the joint ownership is that even though the life tenant has access to the home for the remainder of his, her, their lives. Okay. They, they are responsible for the taxes, the, 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 the payments, you know, the upkeep, all of that. They're responsible for the home. Okay. They now cannot sell the home or take out another mortgage on the home. They can't do anything to the property without the agreement of the remainder man. Okay. So now I have a, now I, now I have joint ownership so I can no longer make decisions for the property myself. I have to now get the permission and the agreement of the remainder man that I named because this is joint home ownership, right? Uh, the flip side of that too, is that the remainder man has no rights to the property, can't do anything to the property that don't nothing until the life tenant actually transitions. Okay. The other thing about the life estate deed is one of the things that the young lady was saying, uh, she likened it to uh, a trust or it being uh, very different from a trust. Well, the truth is that that life estate deed is just as irrevocable as an irrevocable trust. Okay. She also stated in there that, um, you, you would have to make changes to the trust and that would be costly, something like that. Well, the truth is that an irrevocable trust, just like this life estate deed cannot be changed. Once you give something over to the irrevocable trust, that irrevocable trust owns it. There's no, um, Indian givers going on here. Can't be an Indian giver, right? So it, it belongs to the trust. Okay. So the, 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 and I'm, I'm talking about the United States because in other places we do know that people will put a life estate deed on a property quickly. If it is an income opportunity, meaning that the remainder man will be allowed to collect monies long-term as an inheritance, things like that. Okay. Uh, I haven't seen a case like that here in the United States, uh, where, where people are doing life estate deeds for situations like that. Most, most older people will be talked into a life estate deed or, or they will be talked into creating a will. Uh, and, and then as I was stating earlier, and I'm not saying every attorney does this cause I work with some very, uh, um, good attorneys. Okay. Trustworthy attorneys who would never do this. But we know that this has happened many, many times. And I've shared this with the secured entrepreneurs that when you go to some of these attorneys for a will, they will give you a copy of the will. They will not give you the original version of the will. Okay. The original version is, is recorded in the probate court. Now, when you're, when you transition and your family goes to get this thing together in probate court, they are not allowed in there with the copy. They, they are forced to go to whomever created this will. Okay. And then that attorney or whomever it is that you went to who has the original can now, uh, force your family to pay them whatever hourly fees rates, whatever it is that they say they spent working on your, your, your deceased family members, probate case and things of this nature. And it can get extremely costly depending on how large the estate that was left is. Okay. So you want to be aware of this at all times. If in fact you're going the life estate deed route. Another reason why a lot of senior people and families would, would move towards a life estate deed is because their family member is in need of some Medicaid services. Okay. And how many of you have already experienced the state when you're, when your family member, your parent, your grandparent needs Medicaid and they have ownership over some assets. Well, they come with this little trick called the Medicaid trust to whereas in exchange for, uh, giving your family member Medicaid and, 
and, and, and, and services from the state for their health care, uh, we will create this trust to hold the assets. And as a repayment, we will utilize your assets. And how many people have come away with zilch because the parents or the grandparents' home was taken to repay the, the, the cost of the Medicaid that they received. So in this instance, because this is joint ownership, the life tenant no longer is claiming ownership over the asset. So it's shielding it from lawsuits, especially from Medicaid estate recovery. Okay. So a lot of people do appreciate that. Now, the, the disadvantage, as far as I'm concerned with the life estate is that if in fact someone goes to sue the remainder man, there's something going on with the remainder man, because that's normally a younger individual. Okay. And they get into some legal trouble. Okay. Some financial trouble. All right. Uh, if that person is pursued legally, financially, right. The property could be in jeopardy. The property could be, it doesn't, it doesn't shield the life tenant, the life tenant's portion of ownership from the remainder man's situations in commerce. Let's just put it like that. <laughs> okay. So if somebody is saying, oh, we see that this person owns such and such, well, let's get a piece of that. Well, it's up for grabs because what am I saying to you? That person's name is on that deed. That person is, it's so weird how this happens like this, but that person's name is on that deed. It is a, it is a valuable asset. And if we want something from this remainder man and it has to come out of something going on with, with that property, then it might, it might go down. Okay. So that, that to me is a real big disadvantage of the life estate. So we know that a majority of individuals who will move towards the life estate deed more than likely don't have too many other assets that they desire to protect. They don't have too many other assets that are income producing that they want to have tax advantages on for their future generations. And that secured entrepreneurs is where our trust comes in. Every entrepreneur should literally live in trust. Okay. And we here in the secured entrepreneur movement believe strongly in the operation of our trust simply because we understand that we can legally avoid taxation, but we cannot legally evade it. Okay. So we know that we are going to utilize every pass through tax entity as we are growing, you know, our wealth, we're building our legacies. Okay. And we understand that when we are in business, we want to have the ability to operate in commerce properly so that we can enjoy more of our profits. Not only that, what did I say earlier? That particular life estate deed, somebody's name is still two people, three people, four people. Your name is still on it. Uh, okay. Uh, the trustee will only name the trustee. Okay. So if, 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 if in fact, which is what we're doing here in the secured entrepreneur, uh, movement, we understand, uh, financial security and anonymity is real. Okay. So we don't want people in the public to know what assets we own and we're not going to come out and broadcast these things. Okay. You're not going to see us all over social media broadcasting these things because we understand that anonymity is needed. Okay. Because the moment that you become a, a financial target, let's talk about how many times a day Walmart gets a lawsuit put against them. I mean, we can go down the list of all of, all of the name brands, all these places where people have to frequent they, they buy food, they eat food, they buy groceries. You know, they say they have accidents in these places. They say they have accidents in the parking lot. Okay. All of all, we already know what's out there. This is a litigious society. Okay. So the less that people know that you own, the better it's going to be for you. And as a matter of fact, Miss Aurora got a special treat for you. Okay. If you go under this video, and click the link for the trust basics course. Yes. Miss Aurora is going in on what irrevocable trusts are, what they do for you, 
what the religious trust is all about because many of you are, are uh, emailing about this religious trust you want it okay and i see you on the calendar i thank you and thank you for emailing me please continue to do so at info at auroradayconsulting.com okay and then there's going there's a video there that is the introduction to wealth cycles okay so i would say to all of the secured entrepreneurs and the young ladies who had this conversation in the fb group if in fact you are building wealth I would not go the life estate route okay for wealth builders we are on the trust path and i want you to click the links below take that course and then of course you'll be able to have a call with either uh me or someone on my team and so we can get you going on the correct legal entities that you need to organize for yourself so that you can live your best life okay so that's all miss aurora wants to share today in this video you all know that you can find me at auroradayconsulting.com and until next time ta -ta.